What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I wanna talk to you about, just for a second, about procrastination. You know, procrastination is when we have something that we need to do and we keep putting it off, we keep delaying it for no reason. If you wanna be successful in life, guys, you gotta go for it. You gotta make those steps and you gotta make it happen. This is your year and just know that I believe in you, so go get it. Today's video is for all of you controller players out there, or maybe even players trying to learn controller. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be giving you guys some really solid pointers and tips for controller Fortnite. So you know, you can sharpen your skills, utilize new strategies, right? And improve at the game even faster, because we all know that the new season is about to come out and it's going to be amazing. You know, we've done a couple of videos like this in the past, but this one is gonna be everything combined into one. So real quick, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. We gotta do the question of the day. Today's question is, who do you think is the world's best controller player, like right now? Personally, I think after watching the Australian Open Tournament, man, the underrated god named Brezzo is definitely on my list, but you know, I think it really ultimately comes down to woofies and even unknown. So right now, I honestly cannot choose between the two. You guys gotta help me out. Let me know in the comments who you think it is. Last thing before we get into this amazing video, if you want to improve and maybe even reach a pro level, you got to check out ProGuides.com. On our website, we offer courses from some of the best pros like Mongrel and Benji, and we're creating new ones weekly, from advanced building and editing guides to scrimming courses to controller courses and so much more. You know, we also have a ton of articles and guides to help you stay on top of the meta. Finally, on top of all of this, we offer 24-7 on-demand coaching to help you guys improve. If you want to be the best, you got to check out ProGuides.com. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to sit back. Come on, say it with me. Relax and grab some of my favorite candy. Come on, it's that bunch of crunch. Oh, and let's get this going. All right, guys, so let's get started with the first tip, which is optimal controllers and peripherals. The first step to becoming a controller guide is making sure you have the best peripherals and the best equipment that you can get. So, you know, you can get a head start before the race even begins, man. I like to start off by discussing SCUF and Elite controllers. Basically, you know, a SCUF controller is a modified version of a PS4 controller, and they also have a few Xbox models, which you can customize and change to your liking, which might include, you know, special skins, grips, modified buttons, and most notably paddles. The best thing about the SCUF is its customization for sure. The Xbox Elite controller is similar to the SCUF, but with a bit less customization. The Elite controller comes with four paddles, a strong, high quality build, adjustable tension, thumbnails, a rubberized grip, and re-engineered components all around. The Elite controller comes at a slightly lower price than the SCUF, depending you know, on what attachments and additions you want on your SCUF, right? Overall, man, both of these controllers are great, but unfortunately, you know, both of them can easily cost you up to like the 200s or even the 300s of dollars range, depending on your shipping and modifications. So if you're on a tighter budget, we've got just the thing for you, all right? We got the Stripe Pack FPS Dominator. So the FPS Dominator is a great budget option if you want paddles and customization, but you don't wanna buy like a $300 controller to get it, right? If that's you, all right, you're in luck. This modification costs, you know, pretty surprisingly only $40, yes. So we're gonna put that link on the screen or you could just search up Stripe Pack FPS Dominator online and you're gonna find it, all right? The main reason why you want paddles in your controller is so you know you never have to take your thumbs off your sticks that you use to look around and move with, right? Most paddle players attach their jump bind to their left paddle and switch mode to right, so they don't have to take their thumbs off their sticks and can basically do every action immediately. Next up, we recommend investing in a good cable to connect your controller with. Assuming, you know, you play wired. If you do play wired, we recommend getting a strong micro USB cable to attach your controller with which you should be able to grab on Amazon for about like $10. We recommend picking up two of them if possible, so just in case one breaks, you have a backup one. So if you got either a custom controller or a strike pack, or even like a basic controller if you play claw, along with a few good cables you, know, you can use for the controller, you're all set in terms of like peripherals, right? And you're ready to get into practice now. So without further ado, let's get into the juicy topic. You know what I mean? Like the one we all know, some of us hate it and some of us love it. Come on guys, it's aim assist. All right guys, so let's start by getting the truth out of the way, like right now. Aim assist is extremely powerful. We all know that by now, right? So you've got to learn to abuse the mechanics of aim assist. So which one should you use? All right, so we recommend using legacy aim assist. I get asked this question all the time on my Insta. 
Why, you might ask? Well, it's because of the good old L2 spam, right? Turn on legacy settings and head into creative with the friend. Set your crosshair on the side of their body and then press L2. You're gonna notice that your crosshair basically goes straight to their body without you doing anything. This is why legacy is really good. All right, so when you use legacy aim assist, you're gonna wanna typically set your crosshair in the vicinity of your opponent's head without ADSing, preferably in a cross position and standing still to minimize bloom and recoil, right? Then simply ADS and shoot. If you do it correctly and learn this, man, you can get a headshot almost every single time. From here, and I mean like right here, simply keep your crosshair around their head and repeat the same motion, ADS and shoot, and over and over and over. You can, you know, even full spray and spam L2. So basically, you know, with our legacy aim assist, we want to always set our crosshair as close as we can to our opponent's head and ADS, shoot, and repeat the process. The great thing about legacy is that, you know, it gives us the extra boost toward, you know, our opponent's head that, you know, lets us hit them for high damage almost every single time. All right, so remember that crosshair placement is basically most of your aim, right? That's our biggest advantage over mouse and keyboard. It's the fact that controller players don't have to actually perform the tiny micro adjustments while we aim, right? Like mouse and keyboard players do. We just position our crosshair close enough where it just locks into them. And if you can master your crosshair placement and get it near your opponent's head every time, my goodness, then aim assist are gonna do all the work for you. Practice abusing aim assist over and over, man, and you'll truly begin to see how much it can really do for you. When initiating fights on controller, you wanna try your best to get the first shots off, simply due to the fact that AR aim on controller is almost impossible to beat. If you're able to use aim assist to double headshot someone, the fight is pretty much over, like right then and there. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people when they initiate a fight on controller, you know, they typically try to do is sneak up and just crouch, walk toward their opponent and do the classic setup that we've already discussed. By the time that they can even react, my goodness, you're already done, 100 to 200 damage. All right, you gotta take a look at this clip from Wavy Jacob, which shows exactly how you wanna initiate a fight. We can see how he already hits his opponent for 99 damage before the fight really even starts, my goodness. And that laser ultimately leads to an easy kill. This is the ideal fight on controller, guys. One thing to keep in mind on controller is that, you know, with our ability to build super fast, but with generally less controllable sensitivities, we tend to do really well in build fights, but we struggle a lot more in box fights. You know, one thing that I've learned is you gotta focus on the things that you're struggling with. All right, guys, I can't express how important it is for controller players to grind and practice box fights. My goodness, box fighting is a natural disadvantage on controller. It really, really is. And it's the number one area most controller players struggle in. If you can master box fights, come on now, on controller, along with being good at all the other things controller players are good at, you're going to be an absolute beast of a player. All right, so when it comes to practicing box fights, there's nothing better than just, you know, well, doing them. <laughs> Try to find players at or even above your skill level and just box fight over and over with them, right? Adapt to their strategies and learn your own. Practice controlling your sensitivity, man. Going for, you know, fast and efficient edits and builds and also using your aim assist to give you an advantage. If you're on controller, man, it's absolutely crucial to grind out box fights. And it's the reason players like Wavy Jacob, Unknown, and Woofies are so dominant because, you know, along with all the typical things controller players are good at, like aiming, building fast and having great movement, they can also box fight, which is the one piece of the puzzle most controller players don't have. Above all this, man, the final tip is to be just consistent in your practice. Maintaining good mechanics on controller is a lot harder than on keyboard and mouse, let's face it. So even if you're inside of the game right now, it's important to keep practicing and just making sure you maintain a high skill level. The last thing that you want is to start getting worse at the game because you haven't practiced enough. On controller, with the insane level of precision you need, muscle memory will naturally deteriorate faster than it will on keyboard and mouse, where you know most of the muscle memory is just based on speed and quick movements. So just make sure you're practicing a lot, working hard to get better, and I'm telling you, man, you're gonna enjoy it. I'm not here to say like never take a break or like play the game all day, every single day of your life, but make sure at least putting enough time aside where you can maintain your skill level. Overall, playing on controller is awesome. And using these tips, you should be able to level up your game and improve faster than ever. All right, so let's quickly do a recap of everything we discussed during this video. You guys ready? All right, here we go. It's crucial to make sure you have a high quality controller and peripherals for your controller. We recommend getting a custom scuff controller if you have the budget for it. <laughs> An elite Xbox controller or a stripe pack if you're on a budget and you know you still want those amazing paddles. 
Whatever you get, just make sure you're using paddles unless you prefer playing claw. And Fortnite aim assist is super powerful. So be sure to use the methods that we've discussed to abuse it and use it in your favor. We recommend Legacy the most for insane aim, but feel free to experiment with the other types as well, all right? And you can use what you like personally. When you're playing, okay, always try to initiate fights with a laser, you know, preferably by, you know, using the method we outlined, all right? If you can get 100 or more damage on an opponent before you even can start fighting, whew, just like Wavy Jacob and Anon do, you're gonna be setting yourself up for an easy kill. On controller, all right, practicing box fights consistently will prove to help you guys out a ton. You know, most good controller players are pretty good at everything except box fights. So if you can practice and become insane at box fights, guys, alongside with your other mechanics, dude, you're gonna be an absolute beast in fights. Just like the top controller players we all know today, like Wolfie, Wavy Jacob, and Unknown. Above all else, man, it's super important to practice your skills on controller consistency. You're gonna lose muscle memory on controller faster than you would on keyboard and mouse, all right? So try your best to practice as much as you're able to in order to keep your mechanics at a high level. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. You know, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you had a good time. You know, we really hope it helped you out. Head into your next game, guys, confident, and use these controller tips to dominate every single player that you run into. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it a bunch, like a bunch of crap. If you could drop a like, subscribe to the channel, or maybe even share with a few friends as well. Remember, tell us in the comments what you like to see next, and we'll make sure it happens. We'll see you next time.